Jose Sudamon's time. Are you going to take us all the way to the bridge? Yes. yes. Same as far as I can. Okay. Well, it's not. It's opposite entrance, but opposite. close enough. Oh, watch your back. Thank you. That's what he's for. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I know what's in front. If we can't yes. slow down, I'd so love it. Yeah, yeah, this sucks. Yeah, can you slow down, please? <laughs> Mark, do you want to go ahead? Jay, do you want to answer that? Do you want to wait? Okay, we're going to wait. Yeah, good. Hey, good. Hey, sugar. Hey, yeah, I saw her. Let's get the fuck out of the way. All right, get off. Let Frank sit. Come here. Bring another chair here Tyson. for We're going to put Tyson right here in the middle. Hey, Frank. <laughs> Will you not entertain? <laughs> okay. Yes. The champ is here. Jose Oh, is that really? And you're looking up at the green belt, the one belt that you've waited to get, that you've always wanted in your career. This belt is the one that's evaded me over the years, and I've now won it in the ring. Finished off my collection, a big, big collection of every belt in boxing. Uh, big shout out to my team, the promoters, everybody who believed in me. Um, big shout out to Bob Arum and um, Frank Warren for making this reality, a dream. We always had a dream of coming over to Las Vegas and taking over um, and putting on great fights. And you know, tonight was the world was watching Bob. Um, and they got to see two undefeated heavyweight champions in their prime do battle. That is true. Deontay Wilder, let me tell you, he never went down easy. I've got a lump on the side of my temple here. I don't know what's happened with it. Come right out. Hit me hard there. Um, but I just had to overcome a lot in this uh, thing tonight. And I just always believed that if he couldn't beat me when I was only 50% the man I am today, then he never had a chance tonight. Well, thank you very much for the opportunity. And uh, can't wait for the next fight. The rematch, hopefully, if he wants it. Okay, so we're going to do a couple questions here and then open it up to the floor. Um, you put Deontay Wilder down for only the second time in his professional career. How many you times did they put him down? Well, you put him down twice, but he was down once in 2010. The first time coming in round three. What was going through your mind at that point? I was pretty pissed because I predicted round two. You sure did. And I, was, well, I held you to that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'll take round three. It was all right. I, I take all the money because I predicted round seven. He did. Go back and watch oh, on top of YouTube. <laughs> he must know something about boxing. But you, you stuck tri tried and true to the game plan, and that was to jump on him from the very start, and that's exactly what you did. I said, you know, we didn't mind revealing the game plan. Now, we had nothing to hide. Right. I said what I was going to do, run across the ring to him, put him on the back foot, and unload big shots on him. And I know at six foot nine and 270 pounds, if I hit anybody and knock him spark out, I've never been the type of boxer to sit down on my punches and let fly. I've always been a slick master boxer. Jab, move, get out of the way of everything. Um, when I made the decision to move from Ben Davison, who'd done a fantastic job, by the way, um, I'd done it for a reason. And everybody was like, this is a bad move, a really bad move. But, you know, it worked out for the best. And I believed in Sugar Hill. I believed in the style that he teaches. And I knew that we'd get it right on the night. And we did everything that I did in the ring tonight. We practiced in the gym. Um, setting up off the jab and landing the detonation right hand. And Deontay Wilde's a very tough guy. He, he took a lot of good rights. Um, and I think uh, they've done the right thing because it was only a matter of time before he got severely hurt. He was very tired in there. Yeah, and just some kind of stats to back that up. In the first fight with Deontay, you landed 38 total power punches. In this fight, just through seventh round, you landed 58 of your power shots. So that is exactly what the game plan was that you worked on with Sugar Hill. Um, we're going to open it up. Do you want to make an opening comment here? Yeah. I'd just like to say what a fantastic performance from Tyson. It's the best performance I've ever seen from a British fighter. In my time in boxing, it's the most exciting 
win and when you think where he's come from in the last two years to where he is today, what an achievement. The, he is the number one box office draw, number one boxer on the planet now, no doubt about it, no doubt about it. Now, while there's kudos for Tyson Fury, we also have a lot of kudos for the great Crank Jim that produced Sugar Hill Stewart, the nephew of the great Emmanuel Stewart. I just wanted to give, um, Jay, you were asked a question earlier. You didn't get a chance uh, to answer. I don't know if you remember what it was. Basically, the decision, the decision to throw in the towel that was made in the corner, um, was that something that was discussed? Did Mark just throw it? He kind of wanted to know about that decision to end the fight. And I'll let you guys go. Check, check, check. Uh, Mark threw the towel. Um, I didn't think he should have. Uh, Deontay's the kind of guy that, he's the kind of guy that's a go out on his shield kind of guy and he would tell you straight up, don't throw the towel in. In fact, in the dressing room when Tyson was getting his hands wrapped uh, in one of the earlier fights, which they show on the screen in the locker room, they, uh, they had a guy that uh, got stopped. We were like, stop the fight, stop the fight. And right when the ref stopped the fight, the towel came in. And, and Tyson looked at his people and said, never, like that. And I said, yeah, that's the same kind of guy Deontay is. He, he does not want that. And, uh, and then you've always got to consider also that Deontay is a, is, a, is a fearsome puncher. So that's always a difficult thing because, you know, he does have that, always have that shot uh, to land a big shot and turn things around. So um, that, that's what happened there. But Deontay is, is, um, is doing well. Uh, and he's, uh, you know, he'll be back. He'll be all the better for it. But um, congratulations, absolutely, to Tyson and to his, to his team. Uh, class act all the way around, and we're, we're thrilled to be part of the show with him. Shelly, while we have you up here, Jay, will you give him your microphone real quick if, you'd, if you have anything you'd like to say, or if there's any questions, up, we're going to get their questions and then let, let them go. But if there's anything you'd like to say, obviously Deontay Wilder has 30 days to decide if he wants to take the rematch with Tyson Fury. Going in, and contrary to what um, Fury said last fight and continues, I think he knows I have a lot of respect for his ability, always did. And the entails take the time, but you will see these guys in the ring again. Everyone was saying a rematch, this is it. The winner of that will then decide how it goes, right? Do we have any questions for these two men back there? Straight back. I have a question for Is Tyson. Straight we're going to go, oh. gonna open it up to okay. two people. I just want to let Shelly and Jay go. If anybody has a specific question for them, too, so they can go take care of their fighter. Well, I'll ask, I have, I'll ask Jay one question then. Go ahead, Dan. Jay, I know it's right after the fight. Did Deontay say anything to you or to Shelly in the dressing room afterwards that he would want to pick up that immediate rematch? Or are you going to give us some time to think about it? I discuss it now. But. I have told him many times, I don't expect to die, but I've had insurance for 50 years. You have the rematch for a reason, no matter what. Anyone else right here? Jay, what, Jay, what, is, uh, Jay, what is the extent of uh, Deontay's uh, injuries, if any? He had, he, he had uh, a small cut inside the ear, um, may have affected his equilibrium. Uh, and so he's just going to get a couple of stitches there. That's, that's really the, the, the extent of it. It was a tough, grueling fight with, with, a, with a tough, grueling fighter. And uh, so coming from two fights in a row, November, February, which he loves to be active, but uh, this, will, this will give him some time to, uh, to enjoy things, enjoy his family, and, um, and, and rest up a little bit. So I think that's, that's what will be the next step. Uh, Jay, Jay, all the way in the back. Can you just can you clarify what was going on in the corner before the towel was thrown? Does does Mark have the authority to throw the towel in like that? I mean, were you talking back and forth? Just that whole one minute long process. What was going on there? Well, I'm I'm the head coach of the team, but we do things a little bit differently. Ninety nine percent of the time, the head coach of the team is also the guy that's the lead in the corner. Ours is a little bit more like a football team, American football, where the head coach doesn't necessarily call the plays. You have an offensive and defensive coordinator. So ours is a little bit like that. So what happened between rounds was Mark 
said something about possibly throw. I mean, uh, during the round, Mark said something about throwing the towel in, and I told him, uh, I don't do that. Uh, I, I didn't think he should do that. And um, then the fight went a little bit longer, and then I saw the towel go in. So we haven't, I haven't talked to Mark about it, um, but we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it and figure out what, you know, what exactly happened there. Uh, Jay, just what you were talking about with, you know, Deontay wanting to go out on his shield, I, that would lead us to believe that he will want this fight again, you know, whether it happens sooner or later. What is your exact opinion on, you know, his willingness to get back in there against Tyson? Yeah, I, I think absolutely. Um, you know, my guess is knowing him like I do that he will absolutely want to uh, rematch. And, um, I mean, these guys have put on two tremendous fights already. So I certainly think that the, uh, the public, you know, will, will want it. And uh, I think we'll want it. And I think they'll want it. And so it seems a, it seems a natural. So I think... I think uh, I think that's what you'll see happen. One more for Jay or Shelly, and then we're going to let them go. One more? Any? Go. Hi, this um, question is for Tyson. Uh, Ryan O'Hara with FightNights.com. I want you to go into some details about um, uh, referee Kenny Bayless. Do you feel like that he got involved in the action too much? Uh, where am I talking to? Thank you, guys. All the best. Okay. God bless. Thank Good you, guys. Fight. Thank you. Where is this question at? Thank you. All right here. Wow. Uh, hands up. You. Well, no. way back here. I'm in the, back, I'm in the media back, section. Ah, oh, there you go. Yeah. Hey, yeah, Tyson. Yeah. yeah, my question, uh, Ryan here with FightNights.com. My question is, do you believe that uh, the referee, Kenny Bayless, was getting involved too much? And you know, what are your thoughts on that? It felt like that he was getting in between you guys too much. Listen, I th the man's got a job to do. He did a good job. He took control of the fight and he did what he had to do. You know, I've got no, uh, no problems with what he did. And it was what it was, you know, it was a, it was a grueling fight while it lasted and he was trying to clean it up in there. We, we, he hit me after the bell, I, not after the bell, like after we said break, we hit each other. I got a point taken off, um, but it wasn't going to alter the fight. I think, I think he did a fair job, to be fair. Hey, sir. Straight back, Tyson. Straight back. Congratulations on the win. What I wanted to know from you is when you started to talk to all of us about your uh, strategy that you were going to go right at him and go for the knockout and be more aggressive and not box like you did the first time. Was that something that you were thinking about right after the first fight? Was that something that you sort of came to the uh, rationale about during the buildup? Was it something that you spoke to uh, Sugar Hill about? How did that come about that that would be your strategy? You know, everybody knows I'm a master slick boxer and I can jab and move around the ring for 12 rounds. Um, but that didn't work last time. I got a draw. Like I said, a draw is a failure to me because all I do is win, win, win. And this time, I wanted the knockout, and I think the only way I could guarantee that I was going to get a win was the knockout. So when me and Sugar Hill spoke, he told me that I would knock him out, and I believed in what he said. And also Andy Lee here, he, um, he told me that we'd knock him out as well. And we worked to a game plan in the gym, and, yeah, we put it into practice in the ring. And one other question then, what you made your adjustment, obviously a much dramatic adjustment from the first fight. While you were in the ring, did you think or notice that, that Deontay had any, made any kind of adjustments in his game plan? Or was he fighting essentially the same way that he fought you back uh, 14 months ago? I felt like Deontay's job had improved and he did take his time more like he said he did. It's like he said he would. Um, yeah, and he was using his job quite well, actually. I was very impressed with his double job that he was using and credit to his team for applying that in this fight because when you've got two giant guys, I think the job is very important. It sets everything up. Um, so, yeah, I, I thought he was definitely an improved fighter to what I thought before and he was heavier. I wasn't able to, to bully him around as I did last time and close because he was a lot heavier than he ever was. So, yeah, I did see improvements in his game, but tonight was my night and I was never going to let anybody take it from me. Gary? Russell? Hi. Um, Spartan, um, you, you said, you kind of say, as Bob said, we laid out the game plan. Um, you said to me in a private interview at Bob's office earlier in the week that you wanted this to be the most complete performance of your career. Do you think it was tonight? You know, I'm my own worst critic. And even though it was a fantastic performance and I got a great win, um, I know I can do better. And I've only just started me in Sugar Hill with this style. We've had seven weeks to, to perfect a style that takes years at the Cronk Gym in and out. 
but I'm a quick learner and I aim to uh, get back to work straight away, work on my balance, work on my straight punches, and we're going to be putting people to sleep left, right and centre. Don't forget, when I came here, they said I, I can't punch. Deontay Wilder said himself that I've got two pillow fists. But, you know, not bad for an old fat guy who can't punch, eh? Done all right, didn't I? And, and, and finally, um, Deontay might need a bit of time to recover from this. Is there any prospect that you could fight Anthony Joshua next and then Wilder afterwards? You know, the spoils of war has just happened. I need to enjoy this victory. Deontay will need time to recover from the um, fight. But I, I, I'm almost sure that he'll take a rematch because he's dynamite puncher. And at any time he can take, somebody's out, take somebody out, and with that danger, then you're always in a fight. So I'm pretty sure we'll do it again. We're running back again if he wants to. But if he doesn't want to, then these are me promoters. And, and you know, whatever they want to do, I'm happy with. Whoever's next will get the same treatment. That's for sure. Thank you. Next question. There he is. He's next. TFE Mo Lopez. Yes. He's the man. Yeah, he was actually here to call you out. I know you didn't oh, know don't that. Don't call me out. <laughs> there he is. There he is. I want to see that performance over Loma next. Good man. Is there no one else? In the back. Because I've got to go party. Hang yeah, on, couple, Gypsy King. Couple more. Tyson, congratulations on the victory. So where are you going to party? What's the deal? Tyson Fury's official after party is Hakkasan. Be there or be square. We're taking over, Gypsy King style. Coppinger, is that your question? We got one no, more I question. Don't... Should people recognize you now as the biggest puncher in the heavyweight division, Tyson? Nah, I'm an old feather duster who can't break an egg. Pillow Fist is not the biggest, heaviest puncher. Exactly. <laughs> old Pillow Fist here. Can't crack an egg. The feather duster. But you know, six foot nine, 21 knockouts in 30 fights. Ain't so bad, considering I've never really looked for knockouts in my career. I always look to use my boxing skill. But this, with this uh, weight alone and um, technique, right, Shug? Right. We, can, uh, we can knock out anybody, can't we? When I jumped on the scales yesterday yeah. at 272 Tyson. pounds, everyone thought, he's not come for a fight. He ain't come. He's, over, he's over underestimated Wilder. He's turned up for a payday. But uh, tonight when I was in there, I felt like a beast. And this is me weight. For sure. Tyson's a round here. of applause for the new heavyweight champion. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. Thank you all for helping make this a great, great event. Thanks, Bob.